so we can show you. Right, so moving on to the next section. Over directing it back, bringing it back, angle 45 degrees, keep about travelling guideline, take it out, and there's your texture. Start to create that shape. Over directing it back. So nothing's different. This is how I would section it and cut it with a straight scissor, exactly the same. The only difference is I'm using a different blade. Next section. If anybody's got any questions as well, don't, don't hesitate to, to come and ask us and you know, we'll try and answer them as best we can. Okay, so there's our next section. Then start the centre, the way you always normally would. Still working nice and clean. Bring it out. There's our guideline from the previously cut section underneath. Bring it out on the 45 and take the hair out and then just texture it. Again, next section, same again, just keep working around the hair like you normally would with a straight scissor. Follow my guide, there's my internal shape, there's my texture. I cut it three or four times, if you want to create more texture, cut it more times. If you want to create less texture, cut it less times. If you want to take it shorter, just go deeper in the sections. We'll show you as well how it's, it's great for texturising hair rather than point cutting when you get to the top sections because it actually allows you to get a lot deeper into the section and create that texture without destroying the internal shape. A lot of hairdressers spend, and I used to do it, you spend a good 20-30 minutes putting the internal shape and the internal layers in the haircut, dry it, straighten it, and then we're picking it up and we're giving it the big licks, point cutting into it. But if you're trying to get deep, if you imagine the hair's there and you're trying to get right down in there, how many people, we've all done it, and you end up looking, you end up destroying that layered shape. You know, I've had people work for me, apprentices, and you leave them for two minutes chipping into hair, it's like they've completely bullied it out. What are you doing? You just get on the, what is it, but this allows you to get really deep into the section and create that texture from, from sort of quite low down without destroying you know, the integrity of the cup. Moving around to this side, again just over directing it through, creating that internal graduation. These guys here have just got to cut each other's hair. So once you've used the scissors for quite a long time as well, you then can start to push the boundaries a little bit. People think they look scary, but actually they're less scary than a straight blade. Because we tend to find when we do the educational workshops and seminars and things like that, that people tend to take off less than they want, rather than more than they want. Which is a great thing because you can actually build up the confidence. You're not going to cut some hair and go, oh my god, oh there's too much come off, I don't want to do it anymore. Um, you'll actually go, oh, I can take a bit more off. And, and then with that, the confidence grows, you get the old creative juices flowing. And then and then you start trying things yourselves. We're not stood here trying to teach you how to cut hair, we're just showing you the kind of cool things that you can do with some of the scissors that are out there. So it feels different. We always say as well that we know we're demoing to the right people because the fact that you're here in Blackpool at a hair show says to us that you know you want to learn, you want to try different things. You know, a lot of hairdressers are like, you've been to Blackpool, you know, you've been to Blackpool, you've been to Blackpool, but they're the ones that think they know it all and they never learn anything and they never try anything different and they just get stuck in a rut. Whereas people like yourselves that have come out, you know, tend to be more open minded hairdressers that want to, want to come and see different things, try different things. You know, and like I say, over the last four years we've been here, we've got people come back from previous years that have bought the scissors and brought friends from home to work, but they've been there, you know, different hair books on the scissors, and it's, you know, teach me some stuff, it's great. Okay, so we're just coming up to the next section there, just working near the crown. Does everything kind of make sense, what we're doing, really? Does it, yeah? Is that okay? Cool. Do you want me to speak a bit more slowly, or speed up a little bit, or...? I can't speak Japanese or anything like that, but I can, you know. Okay, so we'll work that section. There's our guideline for the previous cut section. This is easier to see because it's over the knuckle. So that's our first cut. You can see the line. That's my shape. And then we're just bringing it out very methodically. One, two, three. That's your texture. So I know when I dry this, and I don't mean in a coffee way, when I dry this and straighten it, it's going like that, and I know it's going to sit and fall and interlock and sit beautiful rather than... If you imagine to do that point cut, you'd have to go through the whole haircut. But because I'm creating the cut with the texture at the same time, I know when I've finished that 100% of that haircut has been cut, textured and thinned evenly rather than just randomly trying to look for weight and chopping into it and stuff. Okay, so we move to the next side there. Again, just over-directing it back ever so slightly. Pick up our guideline on there. 
our travelling guideline from the previous cut section and bring it out. And you can see from no layers how we're starting to create that really nice sort of soft graduated shape in the back. Also what you get as well, because I, I mean, you know, razors definitely have their place, you know, they're great, you get some great finishes, but with these you actually can get pretty much a replica effect of a razor cut. The difference is that when you use a cut for a razor to cut hair and create texture, you tend to get maybe two or three haircuts out of it if it's medium length hair, because two or three after that it can start looking a bit candy flossy and really, really fluffy. Whereas with this you get the effects of razoring, but because you're making clean cuts in the hair, you're not running a razor blade down the cuticle. You work like that, so when Rhea comes back to the salon in five weeks for a trim, half an inch off, just do what I've done, but just take half an inch off if that's what she wants. Five weeks regrowth, put the shape back in, and then five weeks later again and again and again, because you're just cutting back to the good stuff every time. There's no, you know, you're not running a razor blade down the hair cuticle, and you're not destroying that. Like I say, don't get me wrong, razor cutting is cool, and it looks cool, and you can do some great things, but in terms of, you know, repeat, repeat, you know, repeat process and doing it over and over again, there isn't that many times that you can razor somebody's hair, unless it's really, really short, um, you know, more than probably a couple of times, I would think. So hopefully you can start to see the shape that we're putting in the hair there. So we've got that lovely, nice, sort of soft, graduated shape, taking all the bulk out the back there. Like I say, we've, we've cut the shape, we've textured it and we've thinned it. So that's done. You know, I don't need to go back over that and start worrying about, you know, chipping into it and softening it and things like that. Don't get me wrong, if you want to go back and personalise your haircuts, I'm all for that. You know, if you want to slice into it and chip bits out and, you know, go back through with it, you know, with a texturizer. We're not saying, you know, don't do that. I'm just saying that this is such a great way of doing it and you know that you're going to get faultless layers every time. One of the things that somebody once said to us was like, yeah, but that's cheating. That's cheating. It's not cheating, honestly. People like the Sebastian artistic team, the International Art Sebastian, they use these scissors, they use them. If you watch Fearless Cutting, there's a DVD, Fearless Cutting, and, and they love these, they can't get enough of them. So, you know, Sebastian aren't going to go and cheat, are they? You know, they're going to, they know the scissors are available, they know what to do with them, so they use them, you know, and it's like, you know, don't get me wrong, nobody more than me used to love giving it the big licks point, because it all looks cool, doesn't it? And if you're trying to impress me, you go a bit further, don't you? And you go like that, oi, give it a that, and if nobody's watching, you're like, do you know what I mean? I, and I miss that, because I used to love all that. But once you get good with it, you just start flicking it all over there, it's great, you know? So if you're worried that you can't be as flamboyant, knock yourselves out, honestly. But joking aside, up to the top section, we're just going to elevate that now. There's our guide, bring it out. Just working, say, methodically through the hair, but following our travelling guideline. A travelling guideline from the previous cut section, travelling gu on the baseline, um, a guide from my, my previous section below, just like you would with a straight blade, and away we go. Like we say, we're just getting to the bit now where Rhea's had her hair shaved out, but it's grown out, but she actually wants to grow that out. So this is a great way of blending the two, or certainly softening that disconnection. Like I said before, what you can do is, because the way the hair falls like that, you can actually cut it shorter, a lot shorter, and not follow the guideline, and it'll still blend in a way. So I'll show you what I mean by that. In this situation, normally, let's just say you had long hair, and your customer wants to maintain the length, but they want to create a lot of short layers through the crown. You're working like that. Whereas actually, what you can do is, if you look at that, you know where I need to make that cut, don't you? I need to be taking that corner off. Now, if I told you that I could go in, instead of there, if I go in there and take that out, let it drop, and I'll spin you around here, that actually blends. Even though I've cut that, cut that I, I just completely missed my guideline by about an inch, and that blends. So what that's done is that's created more texture. So if you imagine when we get round to the sides with things like this, if you were trying to soften that with a straight blade, you put your straight lines against a grown out clipper cut, which is going to be pretty hard to blend and pretty hard to soften. But even though the bits next to it are that long, and the short bits are that long, because it's all cut and falling like that, it'll take the edge off it and soften it, and it's something that she can then grow out without looking you know, completely disconnected. So we'll come round to this side, we'll address that side now. 
I have to say I'm, I'm quite grateful it's about half an inch long already whereas it's not like you know trying to show you how to blend it into about a millimetre of air so what I'm going to do is because we're going to work with that I'm not going to over direct this side back I'm just going to carry on working out 90 degrees from the head so it's going to come round on an even even length to the front because it's short and even there now but then that side will low direct like across at graduations to maintain that length through there.